I'm reducing everything to a very very simple, you know, yeah. basic level of. So one of the one of the problems that we have always had when we talk about brain and you know, uh, you know, uh, interventions in brain and you know all of that, and and I quite like the way you describe the brain as a hardware and the mind as a software, is that there are always these ethical dilemmas that one gets into. How much of my mind should you be allowed to read? How much of my brain should you be allowed to access? Point number one. Point number two. What happens to the data? Sure. See, the whole the whole issue that we are discussing about all of these, uh, you know, yeah, the uh, privacy and uh, the privacy and all that, and WhatsApp and all that, is essentially what to do with what happens to my data? What happens to you know the fact that you know my my brain you've read and you suddenly figured that okay I've got this uh, you know uh, brain like Einstein's now are you going to go and sell that to you know maybe uh, one of these software companies okay now that is a ethical line that always is bothersome sure so let me answer uh, both of those so so first is we are not reading your mind so uh, like I said at the outset. So we, we don't know what you're thinking about. We don't know what your memories are. We don't know your passwords. We don't know your secrets, right? I mean, I wish I had that tech, you know, because- you know, hey, hey, don't say that. <laughs> some, of the top, some of the top names that come to us, I, I would love to know what they're thinking about, right? Or I would love to know, uh, you know, what their, uh, you know, passwords are, but no, we don't have that ability. So that's one. The second part is when we read your brainwave data, it's like any other biological data, right? So just as you have, uh, you know, information about somebody's heart, right? Or, uh, you know, blood work. Similarly, we have data from your brain. We store it completely anonymized, right? Mm -hmm. So even when we are creating a report where we are cross-referencing all of that data against the global database, it is all anonymized. So every use that we have for it is completely binary. It's depersonalized. So it'll say, so let's say, you know, if we do your assessment and, you know, read your brain waves, so we will only be codifying it saying male, left or right-handed, whatever you are, your date of birth, so your age, that's it. We are not concerned that who is Subhu, right? We are not concerned about that. We are only concerned in the data as it is. So, Kumar, that 25-page report that you come up with, right? It's a 25-page report. So, what exactly do uh, I as a client uh, get to know uh, about myself or, and how does it improve my own efficacy as a human being after the uh, test is uh, sure. completed? First of all, uh, what it does is it gives you as an individual and more importantly, your family or whoever's alongside with you, a real good understanding of why you are the way you are to a large extent. So, you know, uh, very easily, especially in India, we've got into this habit of labeling people saying, oh, this guy is short tempered, or oh, he's a, you know, obsessive person, right? We've labeled that person and you start believing those labels and behaving accordingly. You say, oh, you know, I have a temper problem. No, you don't have a temper problem, right? You are open to short-tempered bursts, outbursts, because a certain network or a group of networks in your brain have been conditioned like this over the years, right? So it's all a matter of conditioning. So your environment, the people you've been associating with, the experiences you had, they condition your brain over a period of time. Once we're able to see that live, in our assessment, we're actually able to show you on a data chart, on in fact, several charts saying, okay, this is your mood network and it is dysregulated, means it is so many, let's say, standard deviations away from the norm and which is why you're behaving, you know, as an outlier, right? So, so what's the norm that you're looking at? So there are global databases now, in fact, US FDA registered, right? Where the US FDA has approved saying that, okay, this is a bunch of research and data sets on thousands and thousands of individuals across the world, you know, multi-ethnic, multi-race, multi-background, 
you know gender neutral across ages which is looking at what is the normal range for certain brain wave patterns right so just as today if you go out and get a you know blood test and you've seen your hemoglobin and it's within a certain range that range has been set over the years with some studies to say that this is what it is for an average male you know adult right or for females it's different even within that once you go to a professional and you might say that okay my my hemoglobin is at the borderline but if your hemoglobin has always been at the borderline then there's no cause to worry because you know that's how you are right and which is why there's a range right? so do we understand these as you know uh, lab tests that can then be taken to a professional doctor and then acted upon are these uh, is there any similarity where i'm saying okay fine these are my data points i can go then to a psychiatrist and then check no no then- uh, two reasons one um, we are not a medical diagnostic and this is something we very clearly mention because you know the field of um, no no i i didn't say medical that i said is this a kind of a lab report that i have that i can then take to a professional because you are you said that you are not a counselor yeah said that so you don't you, offer counseling services but somebody wants to act upon it how yeah. does he improve his life from there so, so we do the we do the enhancement as well you got to talk about this right so uh, currently um, at least in india uh, the medical fraternity doesn't understand this right this is not something taught in med school uh they don't teach you to understand uh brain waves to the perspective and to the level that we do right so this is more an applied neuroscience domain um which has uh, sort of propagated largely in the us some parts in europe in the last 60 70 years um i doubt this will find its way into med school or mainstream medicine because a it doesn't involve medicine b it doesn't involve surgery so it doesn't fit into their commercial paradigm to be honest mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. there is no way to sort of monetize right let's There's no honest. way to monetize it yeah no way to monetize it on an ongoing basis i mean if you enter a hospital either you need to constantly be on meds you know supplied by them or you need to give them a big chunk of money you know uh, because you need to get surgery <laughs> done if there's anything else then that's you know as we know it's all called alternative <laughs> so we are i all I always had a sneaking suspicion that, at least in India, the med students who are, you know, who, who normally take biology are extremely weak in physics. Now you've just proved it. No, no, I don't. Think. <laughs> no, 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 but no, but that said, in all fairness, but Kumar, you also charge your pay. It's not that you offer any free service. No, no, right? absolutely. We, so we, how much do you charge? It's what twenty-five grand or something. Yeah, so it's twenty five thousand for the assessment for the report, which is from the US, and for a very in depth consultation to help you understand yourself better. And believe you me, uh, in the last four four and a half years, everyone who's done the assessment, ninety nine point nine percent, I would say, they've come back and said that you know I you know I never really thought that I could put some evidence based method to understanding why I am the way I am. right and for me to then figure out how i can improve any discounts for the media and politicians <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, for the politicians none right okay <laughs> because uh, you know we need to we need to make sure that uh, you know we have enough are, money that, you know we are taken care no. of but on the on the other hand kumar i would i would urge you to give it to politicians free of cost <laughs> because you know you, you need to understand why they do what they do <laughs> you know for me that's very critical uh the one one thing that i had is that so this is this is uh, if i'm an entrepreneur and i want i've got a i've got i've got leslie okay i, mean, I want leslie to be examined leslie's <laughs> brain to be understood right now is that possible or leslie has to ask for it himself i mean so will i get my employees data or is there data privacy to the extent that it doesn't go to anybody else except the person concerned absolutely you are right so uh, we've had uh, corporations who've got let's say their senior leadership right but it's all got to be a voluntary so people have to be agreeing to do it uh, which honestly most people do i haven't i haven't had instances where people are saying no i don't want to have my brain read um and the second part is uh, all the uh, discussion the analysis the consultation 
is only with the client right so we will never tell a superior or a colleague or in fact um, even a even a family member unless it's important right so we've had we've had several instances now where uh, you know either the husband or the wife becomes a client and they find tremendous impact not just on the assessment but on the enhancement part as well and then they'll bring in the spouse but we maintain complete confidentiality and privacy even between those two how do you so what is the difference between this uh, you know for example there is this big uh, talk there was a supreme court discussion that happened uh, for especially uh, in in uh, offenses where they said let's do a brain mapping of this guy and then the brain mapping became a big issue and finally supreme court gave an order saying that yes you can do it and now you can do it only after the courts allow so what is the difference between what you do and what is brain mapping so you know um, brain mapping is a very uh, easily abused word i have had i have had uh, people say oh you know i take a piece of paper and i draw different streams and then i am able to map my brain you know that's that's not a brain map i've had people come in and say you know uh, we went for a service where all our fingerprints were taken and then we were told that uh, you know this is for my child and i was told uh, that what my child can be good at and what he won't be good at that is ridiculous because your brain actually is changing throughout life so to say that okay at the age of 12 or 15 or 18 or even 50 you would know exactly you know what vocation you can do and what you can't do is completely wrong sure. you know this proof so i'm not sure what brain mapping exactly technically they were talking about that's one and perhaps it is invasive also if i'm not mistaken it is invasive yes yeah so this is non invasive i i think kumar clarified that it's not let me even clarify that we are non invasive to the point that it's uh, not even as uh, you know bad as an mri right where you've got magnetic waves shooting through your soft brain tissue we are not even doing that we are just reading the electrical energy by placing sensors on your scalp You have any video that you can show us or something that you can well, share? I will. I will share it. Um, just completing this point, the one big uh, unique feature in what we do is, if you are, let's say, a CEO or a CXO, and you want to be able to have your employees, let's say, mental fitness or brain mapped, if you go to a a, a traditional setup. the only way to do it is to respond to questions right either verbally or on a computer screen which means you have to actually tell them about your problems you have to verbalize it saying that oh i have anxiety because of the fear of losing my job or some other personal issue or i have you know a drinking problem or i you know i have addiction or whatever else it could be right in our case we ask you zero questions nothing there is no questions to be answered on screen there is no questions to be answered on person we don't want to know your problems we don't want to know why you have anxiety we don't want to know whether you are addicted to liquor or not we will only ask you your date of birth your gender and whether you are left or right handed that's it nothing else everything else your brain will tell us like i said we don't want to know your state of mind per se what you're consciously worried about all we are concerned is whether your brain wave uh, you know neural pathways are showing that you're unable to manage anxiety easily if that is the case we will help you manage it so that mm. you know whatever that cause of anxiety even if it doesn't go away you are able to be less anxious you're able to take it in your stride but kumar then we are assuming that that anxiety is persistent right because it could be that okay anxiety sometimes is very temporary anxiety could be caused by a particular right. instance so how how do you learn to differentiate between those things so if we are able to see it in the subconscious brain wave activity means it is not just circumstantial anymore either because of the way you are you know or because of the conditioning you had over you know several months several years you know your experiences of life etc you become an anxious person right so your anxiety network is dysregulated it's performing way out of whack and we can get it back to normal so isolated some... incidents isolated incidents don't uh, cause any uh, they, they don't really matter that so much it can 
I, isolated yeah. incidents can cause a lot of. Uh, yeah, anxiety. So that is where you. They can even gray your head. In the law of torts, in fact, uh, uh, there is actually an yeah, yeah, yeah. There's actually yep. a case in the law of torts, which uh, it 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 to do with the hair grade o o night basically. Oh, right. yes, so yes. Basically, and you got uh, damages for that. So isolated incidents could be traumatic, right? And you could have post-traumatic stress disorder, for example. Right? Yeah, a riot or something, or an earthquake, yeah. or whatever. It is. Or, or, or like I said, you know, it could be a sudden shock, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, that is trauma, and that can actually rewire your brain, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so which is why, if you remember, uh, you know, our parents would say that, oh, you know, as a child, they would shield you away from seeing certain things or hearing certain things. Why? Because they don't want you to be traumatized with it, and sure. the younger brain is far more easy to alter. So at that age, if you get traumatized, then your conditioning, your wiring can all go haywire. Uh, you wanted to share some video, I think, sir. Sure, sure. So will you allow me to sort of share my screen? It says that, you know, as uh, a part of it. Yes, uh, so, so good. Let me, let me, let me. Yes. Because this probably will give the viewers a, a better idea of uh, uh, what exactly. So basically, uh, we put in lots of sensors on your scalp. Right, they don't they don't poke your skin, they don't abrase it, they don't pass anything in. You just sit comfortably on a chair for about 30-40 minutes with your eyes closed, just relax. There is no stimuli given to you. And this is this is just the data that we are getting, literally. So right? what is this? EEG or something? Yeah, it, it is a, a quantitative electroencephalograph, right? So it is a, a version of an EEG but very in-depth, very high speed. Um, if you look at this vertical line here, where my pointer is, yeah. from here to just this line, this is just one second of data. Okay. Wow. Right? So in about half an hour, we can uh, take about, depending on what we want to do, between half a million to a million data points in 30 minutes. Right? Wow. And, and that gives us a chunk of information. So we are actually seeing the different frequencies here on the right side. We are able to see, you know, alpha waves, theta, delta. So frequency by frequency, second by second, it keeps changing. And, you know, this is just a very simplistic sort of screen we've got. We can go as in depth and sort of get uh, rendered images uh, in 3D of what's going on in your brain. And, uh, and, and that's it. You know, there's, there's no other, you know, data that we are capturing. So, uh, so good to your point, you know, there's no, there's no mind that we are, you know, <laughs> you know if you look at, you know, you can't say that, you know, uh, you're being mischievous or you're, you know, being serious or whatever. <laughs> now, I'm just worried about your classification because you said that, you know, you have male right-handed. So once you do mine, it will be male right-handed embarrassing. <laughs> uh, you could uh, perhaps stop sharing the screen I think yeah. right. you might end up sharing something yeah. sensitive else. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> absolutely yeah and then what do you do with all the data do you store it uh, and arch you archive it or you delete it or what do you do with it? no so we need um, you know uh, if the client is only doing the assessment then once the assessment is done uh, or actually as soon as the assessment is done, the data is anonymized immediately, right? You store it in a data center. You, you, you would be owning data centers at this rate. No, no, not data centers. It's it's all in a secure sort of uh, cloud. That's it. And I said the kind of information that you're storing, you're saying the amount of terabytes that you're going to, uh, petabytes or terabytes, whatever you're doing, when you require a data center at this rate very soon. Yeah, so, so currently it's in uh, terabytes only. We haven't uh, moved beyond terabytes. Uh, but not such <laughs> not not your Zota bites or whatever. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, Super. Any uh, questions before we wind up? I think we're running out of time. Yeah. No. No. So I th I think I think it's it's a it's a fascinating area. The only like like I think Kumar said that you know for it to gain wider acceptance, you know I think I think somewhere down the line we need to understand the fact that people behave differently. Uh, because they could be wired differently, and we once we understand, you know, why they're doing it, it kind of gives them. I, I think it's a great uh, tool for uh, businesses. 
you know i think it's a great tool for businesses i think the only thing that we need to understand is that uh, if i don't know if i only know why this guy is behaving like that but i don't know how to change it then uh, you know i'm still in the same place so i just right. need to get over that hump so to speak so this is very right. like i look uh, some of this is lifestyle related right yeah. so like the example on sleep or you know anxiety and it is a known fact now that if you go to bed on time you wake up on time you exercise regularly you eat well eat the right things make sure your gut health is good because there is a strong gut brain connection so you just live the way that you know our parents used to tell us to right just have a decent lifestyle a lot of your mental health issues can go away right i i, I might face a lot of brick bats because of this because the average counselor or you know people with lived experience will come in and say oh you know you're belittling us no that's not the point you can have some uh, alleviation in symptoms if you change your lifestyle for the ones who are not able to improve even after lifestyle improvement and correction over a sustained period of time we can come in and actually use our brain computer interface to actually change or allow you to regulate your brain waves and we've done that for you know thousands of people now in the last 4 5 years where we've been able to help people quit smoking or get over the anger issue or anxiety issue or sleep disorders or even depression or bipolar disorder or or children who have attention deficit or learning disabilities for executives you know one of the things which we have been communicating a lot about is how your brain your brain state or your wiring affects your decision making right. right so over a period of time if you become a fearful person or an anxious person or somebody who's anxiety levels are very high or is unable to manage high anxiety your decision making will take a certain pattern right yep. um why is it that whenever the stock markets for example an easy analogy whenever the stock markets are really you know going in one direction whatever that may be we will say oh it's operating on greed or it's operating on fear means we are not being rational right which means our decision making is based on emotions emotion of greed which in my uh, parlance would be obsession or compulsiveness so we can actually look at that network right we can actually look at that and i'm i'm happy to uh, you know show you a sample on my screen but i can actually say that okay what is happening in the addiction network or if you're talking about fear i can actually see what is happening in your anxiety network right so if i'm able to retrain your brain you know with our tech without any counseling so that your anxiety network is behaving far more closer to normal right and you will get anxious so we will not make you sterile that you know you become stone cold and you will never get anxious right you will get anxious but the benchmark will be much higher right much higher yeah got it yeah i'm talking about the slight uh, temporary anxiety more because of the timing of the show <laughs> so uh, yeah so uh, i mean i would have loved to continue this uh, conversation because the brain is such yeah, a fascinating yeah like i said it's a fascinating talk it's a fascinating subject and uh, probably we'll take it uh, offline with you uh, uh, sometime because it's like the brain follows the iceberg principle we know only this much true there's so much more to be known about the brain right. but yeah. uh, uh, dear viewers uh, if you do get a brain wave next time around remember it may not just be about an idea it may also be about just saying hello to kumar and finding out what the brain waves are actually all about <laughs> so uh, hopefully uh, uh, and we have, we wish you kumar that you will be able to you know going forward you'll be able to come up with a lot more and uh you know uh, in depth analysis as to and, and probably help people uh, right. you know uh, like uh, face the anxiety and probably enhance the ability of the brain let's see how it goes and uh, uh, wish you uh, all the best and thank you very much for your time uh, on the show and uh, thank so you kumar thanks a lot it's really really fascinating thank you thank you, thank thank you. you.